All right, we are live, and the New York Mets are back. They're back in which way? We're about to find out in the next 162 games. Are they like the cool, awesome back where we actually are fucking excited every day about this team? Or are they just back as in they're going to just haunt our lives for 162 days, give or take? It's your pal Clem. We got your boy KFC. We got uh, the young man Kyle. We got the the freak of leak Meek Phil. The fucking freak of leak. Show. The biggest star of the pod right here is our boy Meek. The glow up on mm-hmm. Meek over the winter has been unbelievable. And we're back this for another season. Felt like a very long off season. Very long. Probably because we didn't do a goddamn thing. But uh just time wise, I think about, you know, we had we had Meek doing weird things on Barstool Radio. Uh I feel like Kyle's a grown grown up boy now. He's got a whole life. Uh, and yet, and still, no matter what changes, we're all still here just rotting away, like hoping and praying for something to change. Yeah. And people we're, who were saying, We're back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For people who were like, Is the podcast going back? Podcast is coming back. We we do emergency shows when big shit happens. David Stern, she's like, we I don't do big shit. That's not what I do. I'll probably get a bunch of guys you never heard of, and maybe they turn into like I'll get a Christian Yelich on the cheap, he'll become an MVP candidate. Whatever he's doing, we believe in David Stearns, but the podcast is back. And if the podcast is back, that means Coors Light is back because we gotta believe it's presented by Coors Light. They've been here since the jump and they've been with us ever since the good, the bag of the met, bad and the Metsy. So from day-to-day annoyances to the big stuff life throws at you, it's easy to get worked up, but there's no better way, a chiller way. That's right, boys. There's there's a better way, a chiller way. Turn that canceled concert into a parking lot dance. Parking lot dance party or a little bonfire if you're a Mets fan. Too cold for an ocean swim. Play volleyball and light a bonfire instead. That's choosing the chill. When you need the chill, get yourself a Coors Light. We love Coors Light as the perfect beverage to be drinking during all the chaos the Mets unleash on us. So when you choose to rise above it all, choose chill. Choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door uh, with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash believe. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. All right, boys. Now we're back because I just read that. That is how you do an ad. It's official. And you know what I think it is? Why it felt extra long? No World Baseball Classic. No WC, no WBC bullshit that, you know, kind of fired up all the baseball talk and, and bad luck for the Mets early on. Um, and I don't know about you guys. I'm sure the freak has been watching every single pitch and every everything. Um, I don't know if it's my age, if it's my uh, like the, like how many miles I've got on uh, on on the car at this point at Barstool uh, or how many miles as a New York Mets fan. But I just, you know, usually I had a little feeling of hope springs eternal and I get a little excited even for like the bad years where like when we know we have no chance, bottom of the barrel type team, I still just get excited. Gary, Keith and Ron, you know, I hear the the SNY music in my head. Some of the staples of baseball that just make me happy, whether we win or lose. Not this year, boys, not this year for me. I, I, I feel like, uh, it might just be a lot of sports in general. It's starting to weigh on me that my teams never win or nothing ever goes right. Um, just more shit to worry about where I can't necessarily watch, you know, every baseball, every waking minute of my life, but I don't know, uh, you know, maybe, maybe Yamamoto would have helped maybe, uh, maybe a a true Steve Cohen off season would have changed things, but you know, I just, I, I can't remember less juice going into a season that should have, you know, some, some level of contention. I'm pretty down. We'll find out real quickly where, all of us now lie in terms of our console meter and our 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 uh, optimism or pessimism. But even that aside, it's just very little juice going into a season for me. Okay, so that's Kev's um, outlook on it. I'll give you know I'm I'm kind of the same age as Kev, and I'm kind of in the same boat. Clemmer is even older than both of us. Thank God there's someone older than us. Clemmer, as far as Clemmer is, uh, both of us combined times two. Clemmer is. <laughs> and I'm in the same kind of state where I'm like it just. Usually by now I've worked myself into a frenzy about baseball. It takes a while. I feel like they're doing themselves no favors. They have opening days at fucking 3 a.m. with the biggest star on the planet going to a major market team. And it's like, yeah, and it's in Korea. No one fucking cares about it. And then they come back and play spring training. That's a whole other deal. So I felt the same way. And I blame last season being such a miserable fucking season where it was like there was really no ups. It was just downs and mez. I've kind of just been like, 
kind of just cruising the wave. That's why, like, forget about the podcast. Like, I haven't been even tweeting about the Mets because I just don't have the fire in my belly. This time tomorrow, I'm sure we'll be living and dying with every pitch because we're fucking morons. We're addicts. We're legitimate addicts. But now we got to send it to the freak to see how the freak is feeling about this because he watches Pittsburgh Pirates games for fun. <laughs> so I'm with you guys, whereas this is the least juice I've felt going into a season before. And part of that is obviously we didn't do anything. And also the free agency in baseball as a whole is just so completely drawn out. Like Jordan Montgomery, you're like, oh, he's one of the top free agents in the market. He signs 48 hours for opening day to the Arizona Diamondbacks of all teams. So baseball, it's the least juice I've had. But at the same time, we're back. I'm going to watch all 162. I'm going to watch all like 150 of other teams playing. So good for you, man. I mean, you, you need it. The fan base still needs the freaks of the world. I do think part of it is age for me. It's just like another, the thought of another spring, summer, and an ounce of fall <laughs> of like consuming my life. You know, even when it's fun, even tw- like 2022, how great it was, was a fucking job. Like it was a lot and it's a lot of stress, win or lose. Highs and lows still get your heart going. You know, feels like you lost a couple of years off your life. And pushing 40, I just feel like, uh, you know, I'm like, I can't. 2022, I've said this before. I had such an emotional mm-hmm. response to the end of 22 that I was like, I need to take a step back as an adult male and not and like get control of my fucking self, you know? And uh, I think it's because we're so close to it. But everyone else I've talked to feels the same way. Like I have three Mets group chats that were completely dead all off season where it's like you'd hear from somebody and it was almost like that final scene in Batman where he like looks across the way and sees Alfred and they just give each other. Yeah, a nod. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're doing all right. Okay, great. Like I'll talk to you again in three months. Yeah. And everybody is down on the team because this is the first time we haven't had anything to be high about. Right. Like right. when we started the podcast, it was like Cohen's coming, even though the team's shit, Cohen's coming. And every single year since, it's always been something, someone, some sort of signing. Pete, Stern, Jake is there. Yeah, like, yeah. Not enough. Yeah. Kyle, no, I mean, so how are you feeling, Kyle? Are you kind of in this? It sounds like you're sitting in the same boat as us. Because you're kind of in the middle. Married. House? You got a house? Just got a house. Just got a house. Congrats. So you're kind mm-hmm. of like, this is, you're in the entry door to the lifeless eyes that Kevin and I have. You're out of the meek fill, still like the energetic in the morning. So the Mets bed. You're, you're not fucking on the Mets bed anymore. You know, you got a real good. <laughs> yeah. You have a duvet cover. Yeah. <laughs> it's like for the team itself, I've always been like, we're going to have great starting rotation. This is the first time where I'm like, we are yeah. shitty. And Sango was the only bright light and he's not here. So like, I'm waiting to be pleasantly surprised. Like, I'm not looking at the spring training ERAs where they're like, oh, look, they had the lowest one. I'm like, they're pitching against slap dicks from double A. Like, of course, they're going to be great. But everything else that's coming in a line, I'm like, Quintana? We didn't even think he was a real player for half the season <laughs> last year. He wasn't yeah. there. He's, he's yeah. a he's – a, uh... <laughs> <laughs> until until further notice, he is uh, you know dead Lowry to me. You know what I mean? I yeah. got I got to see it. Got to like really. Uh, it's just there, you're really right that there was always something to be excited about. And I don't know, uh, Meek, fill me in. I, I, I felt like I'm happy we went and got JD Martinez. I feel like we should have been in on Snell and Montgomery. I don't get why those guys all worked to the last minute. And correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think their contracts. Really, like, I don't think either side, like, one. It just seems like, what the fuck happened there with those guys? I mean, those guys will be free agents again at the end of this season, too. In Blake Snell's case, he had the qualifying offer attached, which you'd yeah. lose a like, draft pick and international money. But even mm-hmm. still, like, to have the reigning Cy Young winner sign in March <laughs> makes there's no something, sense. There's something fundamentally wrong. I don't know if it's, you know, the CBA, uh, the market, something – deeper that my you know as uh, i don't go that deep with my fandom maybe i don't understand it but the reigning cy young should not be one of those guys who's like playing chicken down to the last minute with all 30 30 clubs it's just yeah, it's to me. doing workouts for teams yeah. to show he's doing he's workouts <laughs> what do you what you, at some point i feel like when you're playing like the boris game or you're holding out usually one side caves way earlier than this, the teams or the player, for a reigning Cy Young. It's just – it's such a bad look for the game, in my opinion. Like, a lot of that is is just – the two things I hate, those situations and 
and service time situations like what the mm-hmm. Orioles are doing mm-hmm. with their guy. I think that's such a bad look for baseball where it's like we're just focusing on all the wrong things. The reigning Cy Young should be locked in to a contender or a monster contract early on because they're the fucking best pitcher out there. It's crazy to me. We, and we traded R.A. Well, Dickey for Noah Syndergaard and fucking like Travis Darnell. That was for yeah. Christmas. That was like December 22nd or something. Yeah, that was crazy. But like to me, at once once it was clear that like those guys overplayed their hand and they didn't have the leverage, I would have gone and got all of them. Because I mean, at, at this, I think it was clear that like Cohen and Stearns, I guess we can get into it here. I don't know, Clem, if you had any more intro you wanted to do, but for me, yeah. it was like, I think it was very clear that the Mets were going to make a run at, at, at Yamamoto. And then like when that didn't happen, I think they went back into let Stearns have a long-term play, like let this guy come in and undo whatever else he needed to undo and really get things moving in the right direction to become a consistent machine. Because I, I do think, I've been saying this for a couple of years now, they caught lightning in a bottle. They went with l- l- high annual value, low uh, uh, short-term contracts to try to s- basically sneak a World Series. They got way better than they expected really quickly. They were like, let's make a run at it while we don't compromise the future. I think then they were in a situation where it was like, if we can go get one of these you know, iconic pitchers, or, or at least you hope with Yamamoto, like we'll do that. But if not, we're not going to try to, you know, plug in other guys here and, and hope that these other guys can live up to the, to the, to the, you know, the Yamamoto's of the world. Like just at that point, I feel like they were like, get back to building this team the right way and, and letting Stearns do that the right way from the jump. He had a, he had a Brewers team that made it four years in a row. They didn't even have the league average in salary. So if he can make something out of this, he will. And I, right. I'd rather them not pay all the money in the off season for a team that we're like, who the fuck are we? Like we have no identity versus right. like we get to the trade deadline and we're in the mix of things. And it's like, okay, now you can go try to make some moves and do some things. I think we're going to get into the prediction. You know you, you know we're, we're better positioned than we think we are in the grand scheme of the whole league. Do you? I, I yeah. think – when I hear people are confident about this team, I think you're out of your fucking mind. They have no pitching. And unless I'm just like super surprised and I'm dead wrong on, on some of these guys, like, and they just, they all of a sudden perform, but the names on the paper, especially with Senga hurt, who the fuck is going to pitch? Somebody doesn't have faith in Sean Manaya. <laughs> he, he cut his fucking hair too the one thing i'm like all right well the guy at least is cool Larry. he cuts his hair i'm like well fuck me um quintana mania luis severino ring a bell kev like when he's healthy he's fucking good uh yeah i don't really like okay <laughs> if severino t- returns to his you know best years and you get you know somebody is a surprise and and, and a couple guys yeah you know, senga somehow gets healthy but yeah no you, you know what happened Ooh. this is this is what happened with this season. We were all ready. You get you get excited. And if you have a good team like we did in 22, it's like Mario Kart where you hit it right and you get to start and you go, Vroom, and you just go out the gate and you're feeling good. We get the, you hit the gas too early. You just kind of skid out. That was the same injury. We were just getting riled up. We're like, all right, baseball's back. Pitchers, catchers report. I don't even think all the pitchers and catchers reported and said, it's like my shoulder hurts and we're just fucking jumping off bridges, going crazy. And I mean, it's indefinite. It sounds like he's been light tossing the last couple of days as a Mets fan. I don't feel good about it till like five starts where he goes six or more innings. Like I live through yeah. Jacob fucking DeGrom. Like I do not live like I, I live in a world where it rains fire. So I don't get too excited, but pitching is a thing. This is it though, boys. He's been like our fucking savior until last year. Jeremy Hafter. Like that's I have to put that on the wall. That's my belief thing. Believe in Jeremy Hefter. He's gonna fucking get this thing turned around. Is that a fair thing to say, Kyle? Is that what kind of what you're believing in with the pitching staff? I mean, he we've seen him do it with like Taiwan Walker in the past. Like if he could take Sean Manaya and like turn him in to like a manageable pitcher, and along with Hauser and these other guys who are like, I don't know. Tyler McGill, as I'm saying it out loud, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I'm just Tyler saying McGill with like a two ERA last they're all, fucking. They're, they're all awesome. projects. And like, oh. that's the thing. But again, we're going in with like, I, I don't even know if you could say negative expectations. Like, I'm just flatline dead. Yeah. I'm like, well, they're not, they're going to be good. But last year's team couldn't pitch more than fucking four innings. 
So guess what? When they get to the fifth inning, I'm going to be like, great start. Every single <laughs> I guess the bar, the bar is on the fucking floor. <laughs> I mean, going back to 22 when it was – when everybody was getting hurt and, and McGill and Peterson and those guys stepped up and, like, plugged those holes. And, and for a long time, like multiple months, I was thinking maybe we have something with those guys. And then it was just, like, enormous steps back with the following season. And I just don't have – there's just no, there's no, you know, young arm that's like, oh, maybe he'll be the guy. And, you know, like, it's just, there's nothing, there's no reason to have, if we, if, if something just like a miracle happens, then so be it. But there's no rational reason to be like, what if this and what if that? Cause it's, I mean, they have all- pitching prospects like Mike Vassell, Dom Hamill, um, Christian Scott. We just haven't seen him in the majors yet. How did they? I mean, and listen again, spring training. Like, I think McGill, I don't think he gave up a run last spring training or something. Or Peterson was lights out. We're like, oh, here we go. And they fucking sucked. Have those guys that looked looked all right in camp, oh, yes. from what you've seen? Yeah, okay. those guys look good. Okay, good. They uh, all look good. Go. And like, that's the thing. It's like, that's the folly. I yes. just can't get that excited for those things, though, guys. How many yeah. times have we seen that that pl- pan yeah, out, whether you're good or bad in spring training? It doesn't mean a fucking thing. They're pitching against fucking Kirk Newenheis. Yeah. <laughs> that's <was> really special. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. amazing. So, on, on Christian Scott, there is one thing I want to say about him. He follows Frank the Tank on Twitter. <laughs> is that <laughs> a good thing? thing the year for Frank. The Tank is going to be, as the generation of, like, minor leaguers on the internet who, you know – Francisco Lindor is never going to like Frank the Tank. It's never going to happen. But there are going to be young guys mm-hmm. coming up who get Frank's shtick and understand what's going on and know how to embrace it. And it will be interesting to see if a couple of those guys play it right and, you know, get excited when he's excited. Or like like Trevor May used to play around with Frank a little bit in the right way, and I think maybe you'll see a couple more guys do that. Um J.D. Martinez, he tweeted him the eye emojis in the apple right before he yeah. signed with us. He like, knows what he's doing. He knows what he's yeah. doing. So we'll see what happens there with Frank. It's, you know, it's like who, who, like who from the Mets should you keep an eye on for this season to have a big year? Frank Fleming. Yeah, that's- <laughs> um, the Frank Fleming battle is like, it's not even, you can't even do it anymore. It's become its own fucking thing. We had the bad battle, oh, yeah. when, you know, went under, went under the bridge. But this um, is why, this is why the Frank thing is always like, we're going to be making the, you know, the same videos and streaming and yelling about 2022 when you had 101 wins versus this year where we know everything's gone to shit. That's why you got to keep some of those emotions. You got to have your emotions, you know, they have to be in line with what's actually happening with the team. Because this year, like, right, if, if we have a bad, you know, first 10 games, are we going to be, are you going to be surprised? Are you going to be like, oh, no, because I don't really think the expectations are there. I Even the most... What, what, what did Darren from the seven line say the other day, Clem, when we, we were texting about it? I, I think, you know, I, I think he had said, as always, he always says like 96 wins. But I think even he, you know, had a, a, a more reasonable take of like 85 wins or something. He, but he said 105. Not, and I said, yeah. you are a sick puppy. And he said 84, which is what yeah, Frank said as well, 84. 84, I think is like, I think this is going to be a 70-something win team. I really do. I hate to say it, but I, I just – I don't feel good going into the season at all, at all. I'm back to my old ways, man. I'm back to my old I, self. It, it, Positive guy. It's, it's better to go in with lower expectations, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. This might be a year where I get pleasantly surprised because there is, you know, the 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 lineup does have, you know, if Alvarez takes another step forward and Lindor does what he does, I think by now we can all, I think finally we'll just leave Lindor alone one way or the other. Like he's I not. Fucking hope so. <laughs> you know, he's he's one of the best shortstops in baseball. He's he has a couple holes in his game, but overall, very very good. So like we know what we're gonna get there, uh, and and you know you just have to pray for a bounce back from the McNeil Marte, uh, you know duo there, and you hope that Nimmo just continues his career, and then Pete has to, you know shove it up this team's ass and prove like, here's why the fuck you should pay me. Got all, you know, I don't look at that lineup and JD Martinez, I think is going to be, you know, a solid, that's not a bad lineup by any means. If everybody performs, you know, where we've up to their potential, basically. Can I, I'm just going to say this now and you guys could disagree. It's fine. I do, do not, 
I do not want to hear a fucking thing about Peter Alonso's fucking extension. Uh, he's no. going to go to free agency. He's going to get paid a buttload of money. And if the Mets want him back, they are going to sign him to more money than anyone else can offer. Cohen has proved that before with basically every guy we've had that issue with. Nimmo, obviously, we traded for Lindor. If Pete is, like, worthy of coming back, he's going to come back. So stop fucking, like, there's so much energy to be wasted with so many other things in life. And it was like Jeff McNeil was the guy last year. We gave him money, and he fucking sucked. So I just don't yeah. want to hear it. But, like, but I would say – anymore. He's going to be fine. But, Peter Alonso's not going to be you, having to play home run derbies the rest of his life to feed his family. No, I agree with that. But what, the way you worded it when you said if he's worthy of coming back, I would argue he's already – well worthy of coming back to this team. Oh, yeah. yeah definitely. And has proved it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I can't believe that there's anybody who really – I don't really hear it much from fans. Do you know of many fans who are like, let him go or trade him? Not no, really, no. 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 Other than when like, like, Dom was here. He hits 40 Dom. fucking home runs a year and has 100 RBIs. Just, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. The only world. I mean, like, if, if it was like, you know, you could get a, a trade haul – that is not even prospects, you know, like major league ready. That is just like insane. That's the only scenario. Otherwise you're not going to find this anywhere else. Uh, just, just, I think it should have been done, but also you're right. Like it's not done. So we know where it's going. So let's just wait till then. And in the long run, the Mets will probably end up paying more money than they you know, could have or should have. Um, but I, I think Stearns is like for just for the sake of, his long-term career and the team's long-term career, I would have just signed him to just be like, what's the worst that happens? You have a, a, an overpaid first baseman who like gets a little bit more fat and a little slower and hits like 30, 35 home runs. It's not the worst thing in the world. What's bad for you is right out of the gates when you're trying to build this team and get the fans behind you that you let this guy go. Because, you know, he doesn't fit some perfect uh, analytical world of yours. And he hits 50 for another team. That's a bad problem. I would have done it not not even for the baseball reasons, just for the the image reasons and the reputation purposes. Just get that done so they don't talk about it. The fans, the media, him, the players, us. Get that done and just lock in. I'm not asking you to, you know, do anything terrible. I'm asking you to sign a fucking guy who's going to hit 40 and maybe 50 home runs. Yeah. But you're right. I, 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 last but, piece on that. You know, and then it's like and the other side of the coin is the NL Cy Young winner is setting up uh, workouts to prove that he is a good pitcher after winning right. the NL Cy Young. So it's like free agency is not what it was when we were kids or the wow. Yankees and the Red Sox would have watched Jordan Montgomery go to the fucking Diamondbacks on a, like a one and a half year deal, essentially. So it's we're living in a different world in baseball and especially we're in like Cohen world, which is its own world in itself. Right. So I think it's going to be right with me. I just don't, I don't want this. It's not going to be a thing here on the podcast. At least I'm not going to bring it up. Pete no. will get his deal at some point. Hopefully it's for us. Hopefully it's for more money than I could ever imagine. Everyone here can imagine other than Kevin, who's fucking rich. Let's not forget that. This is your first podcast <laughs> where you've been a rich person. Um, I can't believe you're playing the lottery, by the way. Don't you fucking play yeah, Mega Millions? I, I love our the lottery. lottery. Yeah, I our, yeah, our business. I'm addicted to the – I love the fact – Whatever they changed the rules or whatever they did the last couple of years. So now every like three months we get one of these billion dollar jackpots. Double billion jackpots is so I, I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with it. I want to watch like a documentary about the lottery. Do you realize how absurd it is that there are some people out there who are gonna play a two dollar ticket and walk away? We're just making billionaires that like shifts lists and stuff like who's the new richest man in the world you're like bumping people off a list when you were just a poor broke jamoke in jersey the winner was in jersey club it could have been us no been one's us, it's always it's always, it's always jersey or california i want to see that documentary because there's something being rigged with the those machines for the well, I, if, yeah if, listen the the law the lottery has got to be the biggest like money laundering scheme in the whole world i'm sure you know some yeah. shady shit's going on but the fact that just some like toothless clown can be like here's a billion dollars that seems like almost unsafe to be honest so <laughs> fuck you guys i'm always gonna play the lottery fuck you that's the poor tax you're not poor you can't get taxed we gotta tax these fuckers enough I'll so that they stop playing I, our lottery i might i might be wealthy now but i am white trash I, i'm still white trash i'm playing the lottery what's more white trash than that <laughs> you're getting your wise potato chips on the way out you, you, you haven't changed too much you, you're still mm -hmm. slumming it with us um i guess so like i was gonna go through this would be like the part of the podcast to go through all the great moves of the offseason jd martinez listen 
I wasn't doing a J.D. Martinez emergency podcast. Just can't do it. 26-year-old J.D. Martinez, maybe. 36-year-old J.D. Martinez, I can't do it. I've already had one J.D. let me down. Now, this is – his last name is – or his D is actually a name. It's like Jose Don or something, Donald, whatever. J.D. Martinez, we're happy about it, right? Like, it's kind I of am. a bargain. Four million, and then it's all deferred? Like, that's it's, it's, it's free. It's free. It's zero dollars. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, Harrison Bader. I thought Harrison Bader was a Mets killer. I looked up his stats. He must have just had like a good game or two because he had. There's really no Met killing. He might have had a couple of nice defensive plays. Papa Clem is like, I love this kid. He loves him. He, he might have just one big hit versus us and like tweet at Kevin or something. That makes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's from Scarsdale, I think. So it's like it all kind of adds up. He's a local guy, and I think it was more that he was a Yankee lover. Like the fans loved him. So we, by default, hated him. He threw out the first pitch at my uh, my kids' little league like opening day oh. ceremony last year, and I was like in the back, like, oh, <laughs> fuck this guy!" And now I'm like, "Okay, all right, hey, what's up, Harry? How you doing, man? What's what's going on?" I I still it takes a lot for me to shake off Yankee stank. So mm-hmm. I have a feeling that there's going to be some guys here with this podcast or in our fan base that that picks Harrison Bader as their guy. It's not for me yet. He's going to have to do some, some, uh, you know, what's the opposite? He's got to lose his pinstripes. Yeah, yes, exactly. He has to lose the pinstripes. He has to grow that hair back out. That lush, yeah, yeah, lush, yeah. He still has the short hair, right? Because I didn't see him in spring training at all, but I he's asked my dad. Short hair, but he's growing a beard. Oh, okay. A That's beard a start. And like headlocks, and then I'll like Harrison Bader. And I mean, come on, it rhymes with Darth Vader, so you can like go, you know, that kind of yeah. shit. Like it, he he can be saved, just like Anakin. There's good in him, Kevin. I feel it. Like we'll we'll, we'll get it back out of him. Uh, not a Mets move. John Birdie, breaking news, got shipped the fuck out of the NL East to the Yankees. Again, Kevin, you hate the Yankees. This is a net positive for us, I think. Are you happy with that? Because I feel like he's going to play every game for the Marlins. He'll probably be like in and out for the Yankees. I can live with that. I would hope. Yeah, it would take a lot. He'd have to be like you know, an MVP for the Yankees for me to be upset about that. Get him the fuck out of here. Yep. Yep. Let's not forget the Yankees. Garrett Cole injured. Garrett Judge battling on oblique. So like the hater radar is up for Kevin right now. I'm sure he's very happy. Nikki the good is like jerking off to every injury report that comes out. He's a sick bastard. Thank God, because uh, it's going to take a lot to outweigh watching Juan Soto step up to the plate in the Yankee uniform and just be an absolute terror that is that's up there with like the A Rod move or like the years that it was like A Rod and Giambi and and Gary Sheffield and like where it was just like oh no that that one two punch of him and and Judge is gonna be a fucking problem. But, but Garrett Cole's out for whoever knows how long. Can Juan Soto pitch? Because if he can't, you guys are in trouble. And, you know, hey, if, if we're the little plucky team across town that's winning and they're, like, the disappointing juggernaut that didn't do shit, Juan's going to be like, I'll just – and that guy's going to pay me more money than the Steinbrenners are going to pay me for it. So, <laughs> the, if this podcast goes – if it gets dark here by, like, July, August, I'm telling you right now we're going to be doing the hypothetical Pete for X amount or Juan Soto for Y amount. I can mm-hmm. tell you right now we're going to be – we were doing Otani versus Soto. wasn't even an option. Otani didn't even take a meeting with us. Yamamoto we were jerking off with for, for weeks. Well, that you didn't know, happen. Otani, you know, we couldn't peel him away from the blackjack table. He was, he was in the <laughs> He, he was uh, he was at the OTV. He couldn't take a meeting with the Mets. So. <laughs> yeah, know. he's near that racetrack. Out. What's the racetrack out in uh, California where they have like, the Raiders uh, Cup and shit like that? Yeah, uh, wherever Dave and those guys go, right? Yeah, with yeah. So well, that's there. that's Otani. Um, and then the only other thing here is is like the prospects. I like you said, Phil said the pitchers look good. Uh, how did our Acuna? How's our Acuna doing? Luis Hanahel. I don't – I mean, they're, they're going to be in AAA, but it's, I haven't watched any spring training, so I can't tell you. I haven't seen, like, Jet Williams hit for, like, the triple cycle where he had, you know, nothing but triples for a game or something. But Jet I'm Williams ready to said, – Jet Williams said he's coming to the majors this year, so if he's – Love, it, love, love, love that. I – you know, if Jet Williams' his name was, you know, Jeff Williams, it would be a whole different story. <laughs> yeah. That guy would not be even on my radar, but in, anything is possible with a guy named Jet Williams. And I forgot, by the way, also to add into the list of, of uh, this season with no juice, Ronnie's injury really fucking sucked too. That like kind of sucked the life out of, out of things. Oh, for me. I forgot you about know? that. Because that, yeah. that was, I, I've always said I wanted like, 
of course you want just like the best player, right? Give me a Mike Trout. But there's also something to be said for this crop of young athletes coming up in baseball who hit the ball 200 miles an hour and throw the ball 300 miles an hour and their velocity and their launch angles are just like, they're just fucking raking. And Ronnie kind of showed like signs of that. So that, that kind of deflated me a little bit there too. And then when you hear that he's playing in the Dominican league, cause he got fucked out of all of his signing bonus money and he's like poor and needs to, it's like, dude, our owner's worth $20 billion. He will float you 5 million and not even lose a wink of sleep. Like, just, like, just ask him and don't go get hurt. Ask Kevin for a loan. He can give you a loan. He can fucking. I will run. You can cash. Stop playing the Dominican. I won't even. You know. I, I, I don't and, play. No fake baseball on this organization. No <laughs> fake baseball. I will say for Jet, if he does come up, I don't even know if it's necessarily because the team's bad and they're just calling him up for like a spark. Marte looks like a horse whose legs have gone out from underneath him. And he's headed to the glue factory because we need him to bounce back because he was very clearly the straw that stirred the cup for us in that 2022 run. And he has looked fucking terrible. I haven't seen, but I did get worried about him. Like there really was a thought to me of like, we had, we had a hundred one year and then we had a down year and a lot of those guys are still around. So this is technically like their other match. We'll see which one was the outlier and which one is the real one. Right. And and so I was thinking, like, what if, what if Marte bounces back? And then just looking at his age and his contracts and where he's been and how he plays and what he needs to do in order to to be good, like running fast, stealing bases, being athletic, and knowing that that is, you know, declining. I was like, oh no, this might be. We might never see, you know, Marte at his best ever the fuck again, which is a scary thought. Our boy Marte, let's not forget he got engaged last year. I feel like he's just gotten women weak in legs and weak in yeah. whatever the fuck part of the body he's broken on him. So uh, this is Marte. There's a groin injury, injury, and then he's got his his fiance straddling him in the Rolls Royce yeah. or whatever. Fuck, that, he's, he's doing all right off the field. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's tough for us. But yeah, the Marte side of things is ugly. And then, like, you have Hauser, you have uh, a couple bullpen guys you're cobbling together. Edwin Diaz is back. The trumpets will be back. Uh, haven't heard anything come out of spring training in terms of worrisome with him. I know people were, you know, they're playing the trumpets. People are going up. So I feel good about that. Um, let's see, anything else? A oh, couple other, uh, so a little housekeeping here. Barnes with the ballpark. We're going back and forth with the Mets right now, figuring out dates that work. Uh, we'll have it for you guys. We're going to try to get at least some in the beginning of the season. Also kind of related to the Barcelona ballpark, all the Saturday games are either 140 or 410. Fucking mwah, marvelous right there by the Mets. So we get some day games, some baseball day games. Kev, you still do you still doing uh day game dogs? Is that still a thing in the in the Cos City Clancy? Um, fuck it. Yeah, let's bring it back. You know, I was bring thinking about that too. It was like we had the hat it was a, a thing for a couple of years, and I'm, I'm putting that to bed. Day game dogs was never really a thing. It was just like I used to eat a lot of fucking hot dogs during baseball games. Uh, we we had the Lucky Charms run for a while. I had yes. Here. Uh, I'm willing to try anything. I'm willing to try anything at this point. So day game dogs, bar sold the ballpark, Coors Lights, Lucky Charms, uh, anything, anything that makes this season a little more fun and, and bearable. We're we're in, and then I I decided this was just unbelievable new note that we saw on the Mets Twitter. Three dollar cords light dress before the game is just oh, a yeah. wild move. Resp Dude. Responsibly, people, responsibly. And this is a little bit of breaking news on the pod. I don't know who saw it. I got myself, Kev. You know, I'm a bird guy. Yeah. I got myself one of those uh digital bird watching bird bird feeders. So it's mm -hmm. a bird feeder, has a camera inside, connected to the internet. Every time a bird comes to the Watch. house, snaps it, takes a picture, we get the videos, and then it has AI, it identifies the bird. Wow. For the, and for the people out there who are like, what about squirrels, Clem? It identifies squirrels and it goes, Mah! and it scares the piss out of them, scares them away. The first bird of spring to visit Larry Birdfy, which is the name of the brand is Birdfy, so we call it Larry Birdfy. The first bird to visit was a tufted titmouse, which we know Keith Hernandez loves his tufted titmice. That's, so a, like, that's, that's an that's omen. 
Yeah. That's an omen. So we're going to get into the prediction part of the podcast now, coming up along with our guides for the season. And that is brought to you by our great friends, our wonderful, some would say our best friends, uh, at over at DraftKings. Baseball season is finally here, and DraftKings Sportsbooks, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a swing at turning 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any baseball bet. Even Kevin will play something like this, despite his current bank account state. Um, let's see. I'm looking here right now. The Mets right now on opening day are, uh, let's see, run line. They are plus one. They're money line minus 110. So it's basically a toss up. Quintana versus Peralta. It's kind of funny that we have it. This would be a huge deal in the NFL. No one cares. It's a revenge game against the Brewers for our guy, David Stearns. Uh, but very exciting stuff. The Mets, obviously, very good on opening day. So we'll see how that turns out. Uh, so download the, down, the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code BELIEVE. New customers can bet five bucks to get $150 in saline bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook code BELIEVE. The crown is yours. All right. Break start it off. Oh, boy. Opening day postponed. Tomorrow <laughs> scheduled. <laughs> it's being shifted to Friday at 1.40. Gates open at 11.40. Parking lots open at 10.40. So, like, third year in a row of that time shifting, of course. Gee, okay, I, was so thinking, I was thinking about taking the kids to opening day because they start their uh, spring break tomorrow. And I saw that there was rain. And I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to take the kids in the rain and sit through a delay and all that. But maybe it's now officially postponed. Maybe I can go on Friday. We'll see. But that's that's an omen. Those are just things where it's like, eh, starting off on the wrong foot, aren't we? Yeah, I, I was saying, too, uh, Papa Clem was monitoring that weather report. He goes, Jossie goes, I, I, uh, I'm not going to opening day if you invite me this year. It's it's too much rango, but I, it's not even on my radar right now. No uh, what, pun intended. Our boy, Meek Phil, though. Meek Phil would be going in the slop. He'd be like at the end of the fan where it's just pouring yeah. rain on De Niro. Yeah, yeah it would be Phil. He'd be there first row fucking eating popcorn having the time of his life. 100%. Uh, all right. So, God, that's such an omen, though. It's unbelievable. Uh, wins for the season right now. We'll start with win predictions. Kev, what is your win prediction for the oh, 2024 yeah. Mets? I'll I'll go a little bit higher. Uh, I'll go 80 wins. A little higher with 80, man. That hurts. I was hoping you were going to have I think, I, think, I, I think the pitch, it, you know, as constructed, like, yeah, you yeah. know, if they make some moves or something, you never know. But if this is their pitching staff, I really think this is – I would almost prefer if they were just like, we are building towards the future. Like, I just – getting your hopes up for this team I think is crazy. Uh, I think it's going to be a bad year. I'm hoping to see an eight handle on the wins. Fair enough, fair enough. Kyle, Kyle what do you got? I uh, Going in, I was going to say 85, but now that we've been talking about it, I'm <laughs> going to say 83 with an 85 ceiling, which gets us in the conversation for the wild card. I do no, think they're going to be in the mix. You're technically going to like be in the hunt. The yep. whole time, even That's if you win That's the winning. problem. I didn't like the third wild card. That, it's for that exact reason. Because then you got these yeah. teams that just, like, dick around and, like, well, technically we can get in. Right. I, I'm hoping for, like, the Phillies type of run where, like, they have no business being there. And next thing you know, World Series. That's, so, that, right? that would be the ceiling, uh, I yeah. think, yeah. Is that you get I'm say 83. But I just don't want to – I hate the lingering because then you maybe make a move that you shouldn't for the short right. term. Because, like, oh, the NL's down this year. It's like, well, you're going to get eradicated by the Dodgers at some point. So don't fucking, you know, yeah, don't buy as it. The, the, so, the, the Dodgers are a team that I don't even acknowledge our thing. I'm like, we'll worry about that when we get to it. <laughs> you know, I'll, yeah, I'll try to yeah, sleep yeah, during those games on the West Coast. And when they're here, I'll have to, like, deal with that. Uh, Phil, what do you got going on? Because this is the I, thing. Pitching, if you have good pitching, you could always be like, oh, you know, we can find a way. Oh, you don't have good pitching. You're just like, fuck, we're like, yeah, I, like, like, like kiss your bad, ass goodbye. A bad lineup, you can, like, scratch out three or four runs and your ace, you know, holds you down and you're good. The reverse of that, you are fucked because you just your bull it taxes your bullpen and a quarter of the way through the year everyone's gassed and three quarters of the way through the year it gets real ugly real fast. Not All to right. mention first year manager Carlos Mendoza. We don't know how he's going to manage. Like yeah. Buck could have figured it out with some bunting and some, you know, yeah, this is creative baseball. We'll have to wait and see. True, uh, make the so, freak. We got. I'll have us at eighty one and eighty one, just dead even. I think we're an average team, top to bottom. I think the big. The big thing to look forward to is if this team is overachieving at a deadline, what's going to be the move that Stearns does? I, is he going to like 
make a move to put this over the top, or will he be in a position where he was in Milwaukee, where he was in first place, but had three games and sold Josh Hader that year? I don't mm. think there's. I don't think we can be put over the top on a team that's like you said, average from I'm, top to bottom. Yes, but look, if we're like, what are we, 10 games over on July 27th by all miracles overachieving, what's the move going to be? Because if you I, sell, I mean, it's no, a like, look. I don't, think you can, I don't think you should sell, but like, again, there are there are elite teams that will snuff you out in the playoffs. And if you compromise your future, when we know that it's a little, you know, even if you're doing well, it's probably smoke and mirrors. I don't know. Well, it's a hard line to walk just because we've watched an 84 win team that was ter- that had like a five win August last year make it to the World Series. So it's a very yeah. hard line to walk. You'd be like, oh, yeah. there's no chance we beat the Dodgers. And then you play them, and it's like, oh, this is easy. Right. Yeah. yeah. And True. Phil, I thank you for bringing that up because that's my, <clears throat> my look on the season. Just give me the Diamondback season. Like, that's all I'm asking for. Like, a ba- we, baseball is basically hammering it over our heads. Our regular season no longer matters. It does not matter. We said this during the 101-win 2022 season where you fucking are crushing all year, you get a little cold in September, and then you're fucking done after three shitty wild card games against the Padres, right? Just – I'm not going to get too high, too low. Let me just coast. And 500 is 81 and 81. Give me a little bit more than 500. I'm trying to figure out what number would be a good number that's in the 80s. 86 wins. We fucking love the 86 bets. I'm the 86ers right now. Oh, kind of hurts. Right. It's a bad look for Mr. 96er. But you know what? We got, what is that, 100? That was five more wins than the 96ers. I'm rolling with 86, and that's a fucking wild card 86. That's not a missed the playoffs 86. That's a wild card 86. Fucking ex- emphasis on wild. Get a little crazy. Fucking Stearns makes a move or two. Jet Williams comes up. He's batting 420. This guy's fucking great. I didn't mean to use the drug reference. I apologize for anyone listening. And uh, let's fucking have some fun, boys. It's fucking baseball. This is supposed let's to be go. fun. Every other let's fan base go. gets to have fun. We get to have fun this year. Let's go. It's team and let's fucking shake our asses and we'll have ourselves a season. Let's go. This is the part where I'd say got to believe sign off. That would have been perfect. Unfortunately, we got to do the my guys. So I fucked that up. Definitely should have done the, the win predictions first. Let's go around the room one time. Who is your guy for the 2024 season? And for the people that don't know what this is, it's basically like everyone loves Pete Alonso, everyone loves Edwin Diaz. Who's like the guy that's a little off the radar, or maybe not as beloved by the fan base, that you're just that's your guy, you're gonna rally behind him. Kev's just being like, Who the fuck is on this roster right well, now? I, I put down no. the 40 roster for him just so he has a, an idea. I, I, I don't even know him <laughs> at this point. I I mean my 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 guy that I always will have to defend and like go to the mattresses for is is uh, is Lindor, but that's you know that's not the essence of, of this game. Um, I would say, does Alvarez qualify as a guy, or is he already too much of a guy to be a guy? That's tough. I mean, you could roll with him, but like maybe you maybe you take Alvarez as your guy. You you put like a pin in like because he he he's a guy. He is a guy, but he he's might be trying to be a guy because yeah, he, he be is dude. like, but it's his work ethic. And I think he's so smart. Like everything they say about him is beyond just his, his physical play. Like, so I think he's going to be a true guy, but um, if, it, if it can't be, you know, if he's too much of a guy already, boy, I mean, you really can't even pick any sort of. You want of me to feed you one? I'll feed you one. I don't think me and Kyle have this guy. You want Zach Short? You want to believe in Zach Short? I want to believe he's a, in Zach. he's a he's a he was a Mets fan growing up. Talked about going to City Field. I think he's from Kingston, New York, and I think I believe his grandma died, and he got news that his grandma died, and then he made the Mets within two hours of each other. So he's kind of like a fucking guy, Kev. That's my guy, Zach. Shirts, my guy. I like the local guy. I like a guy who, who who knows what it what New York is and like how much it means. That'll be my guy. And He's also not on the field enough to piss you off, so he could just like do one good thing. And you don't have to worry about it. That's true. That let the record show. Kevin thinks that Francisco Alvarez will be good. Let's just let it stay. That Kevin thinks that Francisco Alvarez. I think he's going to be like really good, though. That's my point. Is I think he's going to all star and all-star yeah, level shit. yeah, going to be one of the best catchers in baseball this year. That's what. That's I think. fair. I think that's see who's not my guy is Brett Beatty. Unfortunately, Brett Beatty. Well, and, and- my guy, Kev. Go fuck yourself. I'm running right on the Beatty train. Oh my and- god. All right, all right. There was a all time right. on this podcast that Brandon Nimmo was being chased out of City Field with pitchforks and torches, I and mean, I was the only guy I mean. there. Nimmo BP, we fucking rocked, we rolled. That beautiful smile, running to first after getting hit by pitches. And, I, boys, 
I don't want to say how much I believed in the beginning, but by the end, it was a fucking tidal wave. And when he signed that extension, we were all just fucking popping champagne bottles. And I'm buying low on Brett Beatty. Can't really buy much lower. The guy got the guy is 24 years old. He was raking in the minors. It's not like he's like a 27 year old who's crushing the minors. He was a 23 year old, 22 year old who was crushing the minors. He had that magic moment with his family when he first came up, hit the home run. He like Garrett Wilson wouldn't ride with a dude that he thinks sucks, right? Like Garrett Wilson rides with him because they grew up together. So and like it's always good to have a good redhead in the mix. I feel like Brett Beatty has to fucking bounce back. And to be honest, there's not a lot of other guys on the list that feel like they're either like minor leaguers or no, like legit stars yeah, that like I can't choose anyway. So I'm rolling with it. Yeah, and yeah. I saw this guy at Alvarez Met for Life on Twitter. He said, and I'm gonna shout this out to anyone who's going opening day on Friday. When they say Brett Beatty, you get out of your fucking seat and you cheer this guy like the yeah. Phillies cheered for fucking Trey Turner. We're going yeah. to make Brett Beatty an all-star. If it's the yeah. last thing I do, I'm going to get on this podcast and spread propaganda like fucking Stalin. And I'm going to fucking tell you why Brett Beatty's good and somehow, some way, he's going to lead us to 86 wins and the goddamn World Series. Brett Beatty, my fucking guy. You know Actually, it, it, you just inspired me. And I'm going to change. I, all the best for Zach. No, no. He was. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to ride – for a guy who I think needs the support. And I'm going to give one more round of everything I've got for Jeff McNeil. Okay. And I think he has fallen enough that he's not, you know, it's not like we need to prop him up like you just described. And we need to do it with Brett Beatty and all these players too. But Jeff McNeil is a guy who we know it has it in there. And we know that it's not coming out for whatever reason. And we as a fan base need to make that happen and not make that worse. And so, like, get behind the guy who was a batting champ. Get behind the guy who we loved. And and let's all work to make that happen again. He's a little bit too of much of a veteran to be a guy, but he's had so many ups and downs. It feels like it's a clean slate. And I'm going to make him my guy. And we are going to pull him up from the depths and make him the guy that he was and the guy that we need. You are my guy, Jeff McNeil. I like that. And now he has the car went from Lindor. So all the That's juju all is lost away. Yes. Yes. He has a, he has a new puppy. I know he has a lovely wife. He, we thought him playing second would be easier on him. Just gets to like play the same position and it, everything just went haywire. Oh, yeah. Your guy, Jeff McNeil, Kyle, I knew you were going to choose Brett Beatty because I think you like were wishing death upon him by the end of last season. I hope I didn't. Steal I need him to bounce back. I he's like, I do think he's going to be like a major component of like, if there is the DVD run, it's going to be like, holy shit, Brett Beatty transformed into like the next coming of David Wright. Like we do need that. Yeah. And Phil, don't you tell me why he can't do this, Phil. Cause I know Phil's thinking like, guys, you are out of your fucking mind right now. <laughs> My guy, I'm going with the diesel bros. Harrison Bader from the swamp, him and Pete Alonzo roommates. He's going to be comfortable. They're hanging out. They're boys. I, for whatever the reason, I always end up stringing my fucking carriage to a defensive player who ends up not doing anything at the plate. Shout out Dom Smith. (laughs) I need Harrison Bader to make spectacular plays in the field night after night. And then occasionally have some timely hits. Like we know what we're getting with him. I need you to be like, Travis Jankowski ish. I know you're not going to be like the spark pug fast guy or like the guy who showed up for the Rangers last year. I just need you to hit like 240 and the nine spot, 230, 235, and then just make lights out Juan Lagares types of phenomenal plays for the Mets. And nobody else will care about that. If you're Ray Ordonez of the outfield, no one's going to care. But you need to make sure you're on the field every night. And you're making all of the spectacular plays you can make in the field. And then anything he does at the plate is going to be great. A lot of leather, little wood. That's all we need from him. I'm 100% with you. I like the name Bader, too. The local guy, all that kind of stuff. Maybe grows the hair out. Phil says he's got a beard. Phil, who do you got? Who do you got, Phil? Did did anyone get step on your toes here? No. My guy will either be off the team after a month or he'll be an (laughs) all-star. Beautiful. That's the essence of your guy. (laughs) Uh, I'll go with Jorge Lopez, all-star in 2022. David Stearns picked him up off the scrap heap. He'll either be lights out, 0.00 ELA for all of April, or he'll be in Syracuse in May, and we'll we'll just forget about him. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm looking here, 2022, 2.5 ERA in 22, K per nine of 9.13. He was great for the Orioles. 
Jesus Christ. So, so yeah. Good. Hey, I'll take it, man. I'll take it. I don't know. He's bounced around a little bit, but hey, you roll with your guy. He has one good game. You know, I was living that Drew Smith life once upon a time as a reliever. Is he, is this a guy who's a starter, just straight starter? Or is he, he was awful as a starter. Then the Orioles tried him as a closer and he was, he was a closer before Felix Batista. He was really good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Really so good. I like, I, I see those numbers like that. <laughs> that, when you have a two and a half ERA and like a nine K per nine, like, that's fucking. There's something there's, there's there. Something there. It's He's something electric. There. He just doesn't know where it's going. We we should have had. Know it's going. I wish we could. We should. It, it, Kev, for people listening, Kev had to leave. He had to hop out. Um, you know, right before we signed off here. But we should have just put Kevin in a room and seen how long it took him to name Phil's guy. Because the name, like I, Jorge Lopez, was an, on my radar. Don't even, even know who it was. <laughs> it's like Jim Tome and Clemmer, right? It would have been so far, or uh, not Clemmer, uh, Jack uh, Coleman. <laughs> If we locked Kevin in a room and said, you can't leave till you name the Mets 40 man roster. <laughs> oh, it would have been great. So, uh, like we said, we're back for the season here. We're going to, this is the current release schedule every Thursday. We're coming back where we got to believe anything crazy happens. We'll do the emergency pods. We're going to start at one episode a week. This team gives us a reason to do two. We're going to do two, but we're going to do one a week to start. Uh, if we already have a contingency plan, if things go sour, and it's basically, we're going to talk about the Knicks because I am fucking, this is the my favorite Knicks team I've had since Van Gundy was the coach. And Jalen Brunson is already like my third favorite Nick of all time. And he's getting close to Big Pat at two. And then Oakland is number one. And that's kind of where we're standing. Kyle just stand there smile with a smile on his face. I was just going to say, you guys are just going to have to bear with me while I watch the, team, while I watch the games and try to figure out what the fuck's going on. Clem, he's already my one just because I didn't watch Oakley or E-Wing. So. Yeah. I, he would be my one too. And like, there's times where I'm like, is it wrong if I put him one considering Ewing and Oka give me so many good memories along with a fair share of awful memories. So uh, there, there may be some Knicks talk coming uh, once the playoffs get here in April. I told Kev too. I, 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 Kev's, I think he'll be like a playoff Knicks fan. I told him like, dude, this team is fucking good. It's just a health thing. It's clearly just a health thing with them. I'd say it's Knicks. Celtics and Heat are like the top three teams in the East when everyone's healthy. I I'm I I fear the Heat more than I fear the Bucks as a Knicks fan. That's great in town. So uh, hopefully the Mets. It's just as a Mets podcast and we're talking Mets stuff. Um, but if it's not, we'll jump to the Knicks. But no matter what, no matter what team you're fucking rooting for, gotta believe. Gotta believe. Believe. <laughs>